This video is about uterine anomalies from RCOG's scientific impact paper named as Reproductive Implications and Management of Congenital Uterine Anomalies. CUAs or the congenital uterine anomalies are malformations of womb that develop during fetal life. When a baby girl is in her intrauterine life, her uterus develops as two separate holes from two tubular structures called Mullerian ducts which fuse together before she is born. Abnormalities that occur during the baby's development can be variable from complete absence of a womb through to a more subtle anomalies which are classified into specific categories. While conventional ultrasound is good in screening for congenital uterine anomalies, 3D ultrasound is used to confirm a diagnosis. If a complex uterine abnormality is suspected, MRI scanning may also be used with a combination of laparoscopy in which a camera is inserted through the cavity and hysteroscope when the camera is placed in the uterine cavity. As there can be a link between congenital uterine anomalies and the abnormalities of the kidney and bladder, scans of these organs are also usually requested. Although congenital uterine anomalies are present at birth, adult women typically do not have any symptoms, although some may experience painful periods. Most cases of congenital uterine anomalies do not cause a woman to have difficulty in becoming pregnant and the outcome of pregnancy is good. However, these wombs abnormalities are often discovered during investigations for infertility or miscarriage. What complications are associated with uterine anomalies? Depending upon the type and severity of congenital uterine anomalies, there may be increased risk of first and second trimester miscarriages, preterm birth, poor growth of the baby, preeclampsia, and difficult positioning of the baby known as fetal malpresentation. Surgical management of congenital uterine anomalies is only recommended to a woman who have had recurrent miscarriages and has a separate uterus, that is, the uterine cavity is divided by a partition. In this case, surgery may improve her chance of a successful pregnancy, although the risk of surgery, especially scarring of the, of the womb, should be considered. However, further evidence from randomized control trials are required to provide conclusive evidence-based recommendations for surgical treatment of septate uterus. Surgical treatment for other types of congenital uterine anomalies is not usually recommended as the risk outweighs the potential benefits and evidence for any benefit is lacking. Women with congenital uterine anomalies may be at increased risk of preterm birth even after surgical treatment for a septate uterus. These women, if suspected to be at increased risk of preterm birth based on the severity of congenital uterine anomalies, should be followed up using an appropriate protocol for the preterm birth as outlined in the UK Preterm Birth Clinical Network Guidance. The Mullerian anomalies are classified into hypoplasia or agenesis, unicornate uterus, didelphic uterus, bicarnuate, septate, arcuate uterus, and diethylstilbestirol drug-related problem in the uterus. Here we have classification of uterine anomalies according to ASHRAE ESGE Working Group. U0 mean normal uterus. U1 is for dysmorphic uterus, infantile or T-shaped mainly. U2 mean septate uterus in which the uterine cavity is partitioned by a submuscular septum but has normal external contour or shape. U3 mean bicorporeal uterus which include both partial and complete types the bicarbonate and the uterus didelphus based on AFS 
uterus is present as two separate uterine horns, double uterus with or without two separate cervixes and rarely a double vagina. Each uteri horn is linked to one fallopian tube and ovary. U4 means hemiuterus or unicornuate. Only one horn of the uterus is present which is linked to one fallopian tube and ovary with the other horn of the uterus is absent or rudimentary. U5 means aplastic uterus mean absent uterus. U6 for still unclassified cases. The 2016 ARSM publication, Uterine Septum, a guideline also reported arcuate uterus as not clinically relevant with the following criteria for diagnosing septate and biconoid uteri, which included normal or arcuate, the septate type and the biconoid type. Now, certain investigations are done to diagnose the uterine anomalies which included first of all laparoscopy and hysteroscopy. Previously, the gold standards has been a combination of laparoscopy and uh, hysteroscopy, but imaging techniques such as ultrasonography, hysterosalpingography, HSD, sonohysterography and magnetic resonant imaging to screen, diagnose and classify Congenital uterine anomalies are less invasive, while conventional two-dimensional 2D transvaginal ultrasound and HSD are good for screening for uterine anomalies. 3D TVS and MRI can accurately classify congenital uterine anomalies. The effectiveness of surgical treatment of non-obstructive uterine anomalies to improve reproductive outcome especially if they are incidentally diagnosed, is unproven and debatable. Women diagnosed with a complex congenital uterine anomalies may require psychosocial support and counseling to address the functional and emotional effects. Future fertility options should be discussed with adolescents and their parents or guardians. The presence of associated renal tract anomalies must be ruled out prior to any surgical intervention. How to manage obstructive congenital uterine anomalies? While a unicornuate uterus doesn't warrant surgical intervention, functioning rudimentary uterine horns frequently associated with unicornuate uterus need surgical removal to prevent the risk of hematometra or pregnancy occurring in the horn. For non-obstructive congenital uterine anomalies like Walker, Piconvate and Didelphic uterus, traditionally abdominal metroplasty was performed. However, it is associated with a higher risk of complications. How to manage septate uterus resorption or canalization defects? It is better done by hysteroscopic metroplasty or hysteroscopic transcervical deviant of uterine septum that has become the current treatment of choice for septate uterus. Subscribe on Ops and Gynae, follow our Facebook page of on Ops and Gynae and if there is any query in your mind related to this topic, write in the comment section. Thank you so much. Allah Hafiz.